who had the whole world at her feet. They say Lauren had met, quote, an older white man on the dating app Bumble, left to plan her daughter's funeral just days before Christmas. Police failed to extend the most basic courtesies and told his family to stop calling. Hi guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. Happy New Year. So for today's case, we will be talking about Lauren Smith Fields. Now, a lot of you guys did send me this case um, on Instagram to cover. And at this point, we have a devastated family who is searching for answers as to why their 23 year old daughter was found unresponsive in her apartment after meeting an older white man on the dating app called Bumble. Lauren Smith Fields was a 23 year old from Bridgeport, Connecticut. She came from a very loving and tight knit family. Growing up, she was known to be very ambitious, kind, and also athletic. She was actually a track star when she was attending Stanford High School. And when she graduated, she went on to attend cosmetology school. She began to study at Norwalk Community College. So not only was she determined to go to cosmetology school, she also had a very strong, you know, internet presence about her. She was known as an influencer, sharing her lifestyle, traveling, showing us different makeup looks, different hair tutorials and tips. She had an amazing following on YouTube and Instagram. <laughs> Lauren. So you're back with Lauren and do you guys like my red hair? I'm vlogging on my phone because I don't have my camera and I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna give you guys a, well I'm gonna dye two links today. One's gonna be a periwinkle um, ice bowl. So when news had spread that Lauren's life was taken away so soon, it had a lot of people talking because the details wasn't really adding up. Now, according to investigators, different news articles online, and even social media, Lauren was on a dating site called Bumble. Allegedly, Lauren had met an older white man on this dating site, and with many dating accounts like Bumble, Tinder, or even Plenty of Fish, which we had our fair share of tragic cases with online dating, they all share a mission statement that enforces users to be safe and taking precautions before meeting men or women online. Now, for Lauren, after using the app, she was found unresponsive in her home on December 12th. Now, the man that Lauren actually matched with on Bumble, his identity is unknown right now, unfortunately, but she did invite him over, you know, to meet her at her apartment. And the details about what went on when he got to the apartment is pretty much non-existent. But the man from that dating app, he was there and he was the one that called 911 to report that, you know, something was wrong with Lauren. Now, as of today, Lauren's family, they're left with unanswered questions regarding Lauren's death. Even myself, it's very upsetting because I literally could not find any real information. I guess because this case is still currently ongoing. But um, after the first autopsy, there was no real details on what happened to Lauren. So her family did pay out of pocket for a second autopsy to be done so that they can find out the truth because investigators aren't really providing the family with answers that they need. Without a doubt, we know that my daughter was not a drug user and I had a second autopsy myself paid out of pocket because we felt so uncomfortable with the way it was handled. The family says they are not satisfied with answers they got from an investigator. I asked him about the guy. He just made it seem like the guy was a nice guy. It was nothing to investigate. The only contact that we have had was from a very insensitive, condescending and arrogant detective. Lauren's dad reading a scathing statement saying police failed to extend the most basic courtesies and told his family to stop calling. Councilwoman Maria Pereira says police owe Lauren's mom an apology. She sent a really well-written email and I was shocked 
when just yesterday she told me she had not even received a response. A mom who's left to plan her daughter's funeral just days before Christmas says she's struggling to find a path forward. Life is not the same. I don't know who I'm going to be after this. And one of the frustrations that the family had was the fact that investigators never questioned the white man that came to her house from, you know, the Bumble dating app. You know, investigators made a statement that he seemed like a good man. So they didn't really think to look into him at all. But to me, I feel like that is crazy and absurd and honestly disrespectful because I feel like you know this case kind of reminds me of a Mia Marcano case where the killer could literally be right in front of you but you're you know taking your sweet time because you don't feel like her case is maybe as important so now because news is really spreading on social media the Bridgeport Police Department finally came out with a BS statement regarding the mysterious death of Warren. So because this case is still ongoing, there's not much updates at the moment. And it's very upsetting that the last person to see her is not automatically a suspect. And that leads me to think that maybe if he was a black man, would he have been questioned right away? This man being white, did investigators kind of let it go, you know, and he wasn't aimed a threat? Was this man involved with law enforcement? Because I did see some comments about that as well. You know, there's just a lot of different theories about this case, about what really happened. But all that we do know is that we have a beautiful, young and successful, you know, young girl that is really just trying to live her life and traveling and doing hair and makeup you know and her life was taken away under really suspicious circumstances in the family they don't really have any closure they don't really know what happened or what's going on so this is just to show you as well to kind of be careful when it comes to online dating and just really taking precautions on who you're meeting you know making sure that you're not you know just putting yourself in dangerous situations so as of right now we're pretty much just going to wait for some updates regarding this case because i really want to know what happened to lauren we're definitely going to end this video with a prayer for the family because honestly i know they're you know they're sad they're heartbroken like a lot of things are going on probably emotionally and mentally that we don't even see especially since the holidays just passed and the new years and they still have to deal with not knowing the truth about what really happened to lauren so let's for sure um go ahead and pray for the family father lord god we come together and we pray for lauren's family we pray for peace we pray for healing and we pray for the truth father lord god because you know all things right now lord god anybody that is not supposed to be on this case right now that is that is hindering the truth um from coming out we pray against them right now with the blood of jesus father lord god we pray for peace over this family right now because right now they're hurting and we're praying for clarity father lord god that while this case is still ongoing the truth will always come to light because you know all things so we just thank you father lord god for this platform we thank you father lord god for the message and we just keep Lauren's family encouraged and just letting them know that, hey, we're with you. Um, we're riding this out with you. We see you. We know what's going on. And we're really just keeping them in our prayers. But for the most part, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will keep you guys updated regarding this case. And I'll see you guys in the next video. They gonna find you. Catch you sleeping. Ooh, 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 stay woke, baby creep.